but I am so committed to the church arising in the fullness and in the glory of Jesus Christ and fulfilling her call rather than being limited by what is going on in the earth today, that all of my uh, direction, even with the spirit of God, kind of goes that way. You know, I know that we are, will be coming out of 2020, and we know that that was an unprecedented season. And I don't know if you know what the word unprecedented means, but it just simply means never before known or experienced or unheard of. But I actually believe that 2021, God is saying we're moving into the unpredictable. And you think, well, they kind of sound alike. Or are we just jumping out of the fire pan into the fire? And I don't think so. But unpredictable means this. It means likely to change suddenly and without reason. And so, therefore, it's not likely to be depended upon. And what I want to say uh, simply by that is this, there are changes that you cannot prepare for without revelation from God. And so I so appreciate those that are saying before, listen, don't get into fear, but make practical preparation. But don't forget your spiritual preparation, because in the natural, unpredictable means I can't see. The future is unforeseeable. It's not clearly identified that it's erratic. That is why we need the prophetic so strongly at that time. You either are part of the of prophets, you are part of a prophetic tribe, or you need to connect yourself. Because I believe all of us in this next season, that if it's unpredictable, that means that suddenlies are going on. Negative suddenlies, but also very much opportune suddenlies by the Spirit of God. And you need to be one that is prepared uh, I, to see what others might not see at this time. I also think you can call unpredictability uncertain times. And I think when people talk about uncertain times, it just means I don't know what the outcome is going to be. It feels unreliable. Everything's going to feel risky. That would cause you to get into risk management. And I don't believe that that's the direction that God wants us to go. Instead, we need to realize, yes, we do know the outcome. The greatest move of God on the earth that the earth has ever seen before. The greatest awakening, the greatest display of the miraculous. But doubt, I believe, is going to try to take the place of faith. And in the midst of havoc, you have to keep a kingdom mindset. And one of the things that the Spirit of God spoke to me is that a certain faith is needed for uncertain times. And John 16, says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Uh, I think we have to look at those things and say, yes, that's, that's true. I also think that we have often been very careful to ever mention the word judgment, but we're okay to mention the word that we serve a God of justice. Well, when a God of justice comes forth, we do see judgment. And I believe we are seeing some judgment in the earth today. And I believe it's because we have chosen the comfort of man over the conviction of truth. And God is saying that you, that we are in need of a moral and a truth reformation at this time. And, and, and Bishop Garlington, you said it so well, you know, when truth can't even enter and honesty can't enter our streets, that's Isaiah 59, 14, and justice is driven back and, and we're calling um, evil good, you know, there becomes this tension between what is politically correct versus what is biblically correct. And that means that we are in need of a moral and a truth reformation. And what is what is that going to do as part of your preparedness? I believe part of your preparedness is we are we are definitely picking up truth in the streets. We are going back to a gospel foundation. There are biblical non-negotiables. I believe that it is time. You know, Bishop Hammond has always been a prophetic theologian. I believe it's time for many prophetic theologians to rise up. There is a release of revelation that we have not seen. I believe there's part of the scriptures that have been closed for the time that we are in now, and they are being opened, and you need to read the Bible like you've never read it, read it before. Pick up the truth that's fallen in the streets, and I believe there's some of you that are listening today. You've been waiting to see how is my call in God going to be fulfilled. 
this is your time. New Bible schools are going to open. Uh, uh, new uh, uh, schools of uh, learning, universities even are going to open because there's a level of truth that is rising. And what does do I believe that means? Truth has an ability to liberate people, has ability to liberate nations. It has the ability to uh, liberate our minds from our mindset because it, it washes and renews our mind. And so in this place of unpredictability, we cannot be passive. We have to be the warriors. We cannot just love the pretty parts of God, his love and his mercy without honoring the fact that we have battle to enter into victory and also that the mercy that we love also means that there is judgment somewhere else. But I heard the Lord tell me this, and he says, coming into an unpredictable season, forewarned makes us forearmed. And for us to rise up as the ecclesia in the midst of this shaking for the awakening, in the midst of where multitudes are in the valley of decisions, where nations are shifting at this time, where we're being realigned, rearranged, recalibrated, all of that, where we're believing for payback from 20 to 20, we are going to have these storms that Bishop Garleton was speaking about. There's great warfare, but with great warfare comes great victory and great glory. And I believe 2021 is going to be the unpredictable. And this is how we deal with it. Listen, uh, you expect the unexpected. You know, don't miss out on a blessing because it isn't packaged the way that you expected it. How do we then prepare? Expecting the unexpected makes the unexpected expected. And I know that that is a mouthful. And I got a couple minutes here uh, left to finish this. You know, prepare for the suddenlies of God. That means that you can take quick action to walk through open doors, open opportunities, open places for, for influence for the kingdom of God's sake. You know, in, and whenever there's the suddenlies of God, there's announcements that are unexpected, like uh, the announcement of Jesus's birth. Mary and the shepherds were never the same again. I believe that we're going to have prophetic announcements that's going to change lives and nations forever in the midst of this. But because they seem to be almost unpredictable, we can't determine them and they're quick in and out. I believe we don't have the run up time that we have normally had. And I believe that many of you are going to find out what you expected to be your next chapter is not your next chapter. It's not just a continuation of 2020, even though I believe the beginning of the year is going to look a lot different. I don't believe you're in the next chapter. I believe you're in a new storyline, that you're in a new narrative and God and you're going to be surprised at what's been waiting for you all along. These incredible divine interruptions. And I believe that God is saying, yes, we're preparing for a year of war and triumph. And he is saying, no guts, no glory. We have got to realize that where we start out chaotic, we've got to end up conquering. And Cindy, I so thank you for encouraging us that we need a blue room. James, we need a red room. One where we begin to rule and reign as the ecclesia and as the prophetic intercessors uh, that God has called each one of us to. But I also think if we move into this time of unpredictability, and I'm going I'm to uh, uh, close here, is no guts, no glory. As we prepare for that time, it taking an, it's taking a new level of faith. You cannot step out of the boat without keeping your focus on Jesus. So your focus cannot be on turmoil. It cannot be on the injustices. It cannot be upon the colors. It cannot be on the culture. Uh, it cannot be on um, the economy solely. Doesn't mean we don't wanna be answers and solutions, but it has got to be, keep your focus on Jesus. And the last thing I'm sharing, God said, warn others of loss aversion. I've never heard that term before, so I looked it up, loss aversion. And in a world of business and finance, loss aversion means this, it's easy to place a higher value on avoiding losses than on potential gains. And that's loss aversion. I believe we're wired to feel twice as bad about a loss as we do about a gain. And I believe the Lord is saying right now that, that in this suddenly, in this unpredictable, in this unexpected, do not fear. Loss aversion is governed by fear. Rise up to another level of faith for godly risks and godly uh, uh, opportunities at this time.